what do you think it's going to take to kind of change this this cultural thing that we have going on in the world? I mean, obviously, it's a huge economic lift to these what. companies. Well, we'll see what happens after this virus. I think we're going to live in a different world. Like right now, there's not one Dolphinarium open anywhere in the world. Right now, there is not one Dolphinarium mm. open. And how long can they hold? We're gonna, you know, you're going to see half the restaurants in your town are going to be gone. Places you grew up eating at are going to be gone forever. Your movie theaters probably after this, there probably won't be an AMC movie theater anymore. Like things are going to be gone. It's going to change things a lot. And I think yeah. half of the Dolphinariums won't make it through this. Easily half of them won't make it. SeaWorld stock right now is in the gutter. Like mm -hmm. how many months of this can they, how many months can they not be open? Before is they, that something that you guys have talked about? Have you guys have you guys had discussions well, about in Indonesia? I've just doubled the size of my facility in the past thirty days. I'm ready. All right, my staff is ready. We're, any place that closes, we're ready to take all their. I can take every dolphin right now in Indonesia. We're ready to go. So you guys are kind of anticipating that this is going to happen to these. Absolutely. And wow. we can replicate what we built in Bali. That can be replicated in Mexico. It can be. Uh, we're going to see places closing left and right. Wow, man, that is it's expensive to keep captive dolphins. They eat a lot of fish every day, and you got to have a big staff. We have a full time veterinarian. Like most facilities don't have a full time vet, they have a guy that comes once every few months. Like it's not cheap to have all that. Like mm -hmm. how long can they hang on? Yeah. No, it's, it's very interesting how there's kind of like this weird silver lining in this whole virus thing, how it's changing. It's turning around the environment with pollution as far as pollution goes, water pollution, air pollution. And then now this with with animal captivity, obviously people can't be going to zoos or aquariums. I think this will change our entire relationship with animals. That would be a benefit if it came out of it because the whole thing was started by eating animals. And like, um, you know, every animal place right now, there's no, they're not open. And how long can they do that for? And do people, you know, and then when, it's not like the, the country's not going to open up like Thursday and it's back open. Like it's going to, we're we're all getting used to this. Like, you think you're going to shake someone's hand ever again? Ever again. Right. You think that's going to change? Like, there's things that are just done. Like, when and if the economy, I mean, I mean I'm going to say when the economy does start to come back. I don't think, I mean, it's safe to say that zoos and aquariums are not going to be the first place people go to. No, nightclubs, movie theaters, zoos, no. These right. are the last places anyone's going to. Right, well, exactly. And so what are they going to do? Like, you know, I, I totally anticipate like them removing every other seat on an airplane and doubling the price of tickets. Like I'm anticipating that's what the air travel will get more exclusive. But like, can they afford to only let half the amount of people into SeaWorld and charge twice as much? Probably no one's going to pay $200 to go to SeaWorld. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just don't see that model working. And like, you know, it was stupid. They had their chance. Like when Blackfish came out around that same time, there was also a big push against Ringling Brothers Circus and the elephants. And so they finally threw in the towel and said, we're getting rid of the elephants. And then a year later, after 180 years in business, they were out of business. Like, it's just, a, and SeaWorld didn't see the writing on the wall. They doubled down on animals in captivity, where they should have been backing off. Because you go to SeaWorld, half of it is roller coasters. And roller coasters where you wear VR goggles. Like, they have such an opportunity to do such an amazing thing. They could have a fucking a theater that holds 200 people with one guy hitting a green button and a red button to start the show. And that's the only cost after they spend a million bucks making the VR film. And they'll have the most unbelievable experience in the world. Mm -hmm. Instead, they've got to have dolphins. And they got dolphins, they got us. They got problems. They got people protesting. They've got controversy. They've got overhead. What do these people say that run these places? What do they say? What is their response to you? Like, what well, would they say to like, you right now? Things like that is corporate. Like, of course, like, you know, the people that are working day to day with the animals are well-meaning people. Like, they, you know, they, they think, well, if I quit my job as a trainer, who's going to take as good care of the dolphin? They all want the best care. It's the corporate heads, you know. Of course. You look on the bottom of SeaWorld's website, it's, it's called the SeaWorld Entertainment Corporation. They're not an educational. They're an entertainment corporation, point blank. Mm. And so it's just. So what 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 would those corporate figures at the top of SeaWorld that basically they see you as one of their biggest enemies? They see you as the people that are trying to take them down. 
have you listened to any of them? Have you had like a discussion with any of those people? Have you listened to them respond to movies like The Cove or respond to movies like Blackfish? Do you know what they're well, like? They denied. In fact, there's a massive lawsuit. They've lost all their initial hearings where, you know, the first year after Blackfish came out and their stock went in the toilet, they said they were, it was, it was affected by weather on certain dates or that holidays fell. They said every excuse but Blackfish. And now all those investors are suing. Like that could be the end of SeaWorld if they win this lawsuit. Because all the investors are suing that you screwed us. You lied point blank that it was having no effect when you were internally freaking out. Like, you know, I, I don't get it. It's just, you know, it's like without the orcas, they lose. The orcas are the draw. We have a place here, Miami Sea Aquarium in Miami. They have Lolita. The day Lolita dies and is gone, like, they're closed to that. They're done two months later. That is what keeps that place going. And so it's just a matter of time. Yeah. It's just money. Mm -hmm. That's all that you're saying. Like, why it's just, why do they have to keep going? It's money. But I think they would make just as much money as a theme park that was aquatic themed and had vir used virtual reality and 3d and all the different things we have available and augmented reality. You could do something amazing. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I really appreciate your time doing this, man. I've learned a lot. Um, and if people want to know more, they can go check out our website. I hope you'll you'll put a link. Dolphin. Brothers. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me uh, all your social media links and what your websites are, so people can listen to go find them. And I'll My also link them below. Dolphinproject.com and on uh, Instagram and Twitter and Twitch, we're at uh, Dolphin underscore Project. Um, you all of our accounts on all our all the social media platforms are all verified, so you'll know that it's us. And um, you guys update the website almost monthly or weekly on the projects you guys are working on, where you guys are traveling. Oh yeah, it's updated constantly, and we're writing. We have a full time staff that's writing new blogs, and I think social media posts goes out every four hours, twenty four hours a day. We're very active social media, and we're live streaming all the time, and. Um, you know, people, there's a tons of stuff people can do on the website. It just depends on their time and involvement. But the most simplistic thing people can do is just don't buy a ticket to a dolphin show. And as simplistic and easy as that sounds, it's all driven by supply and demand. And if you don't buy any more tickets to dolphin shows, you don't go on cruises that have dolphins, you don't stay in a hotel that's got dolphins, they'll go out of business and they'll get the message. That's the only thing, the way they get the message. Mm-hmm. Corporate America, or corporate anyone. Yeah, I think it's definitely starting to. Uh, I think the scale is starting to tip now, and people are definitely starting to realize that more and more. As you know, people like yourself and your father, and and there's lots of other people that are very vocal about it and talk about it on shows like this. And Literally 20 years ago, it would be us by ourselves in front of an aquarium. Now we host an event called Empty the Tanks. We're simult well, not this year, but every year previous, like simultaneously, we protest like. 170 different facilities around the world at the same day at the same time like you know now it's become this giant groundswell movement and so we just helped to gu guide that movement now it's kind of changed our work a little bit <laughs>